with glaives. It's like, okay. Always mixes in these weird timings, which other people don't get to see as much. Um, we don't get to see from other people as much. Whoops, I had that timer. All right, guys, let's spawn into map number three. Here we go. Up in the top right hand side, the red Protoss. It is patience. An impressive comeback in game number one, but got kind of crushed in game number two by those surprise mutilisks. Of course, his opponent showing very solid play throughout IEM. It is Cyril. Cyril is uh, an absolute, absolute beast in, in some of his matches um, at IEM. For you guys who didn't watch it, he would basically skirmish with Nurtio in early game Zerg vs Zerg and always end up 10 to 15 supply ahead. Um, and you couldn't really see like the difference in what was going on, but it was just the fact that he's so fast at constantly spending his drones. Like every time a lava comes out, he spends it. Every time he's microing units, he's spending his money in the middle of battles. Like he's just so on point with his injects and his spending. Um, it's, it's really impressive. It's very like dark level of, um, of Zerg player. So very cool to see. Uh, a laser, another player who we've kind of, kind of talked about um, being on that same level speed wise. Though a laser having some ups and downs recently, um, not quite doing as well in some of his tournaments as he would have liked. Interestingly, Patience here going for a two gate opening once again now this is really common on cactus valley because it's a four player map there's a good chance your opponent doesn't scout what you're up to and especially since you're up against Cyril, you know he's going to go hatch gas pool there's a good chance if he doesn't scout you first your adepts get over there there's not enough uh, zerglings out only two or four zerglings and then your opponent's in big trouble so only with this second overlord will Cyril get knowledge of what's happening so that's going to arrive over here somewhere near the natural yep and it's going to see the two adepts leave um probably might even miss those actually, but it'll definitely spot the two gateways and it'll give uh, Cyril a very small window of time to respond uh, and get that out. So two adepts are coming out, of course, you chrono boost one and then when it's about halfway done, you chrono boost the other so that the adepts come out at exactly the same time. Behind this, the second gas does go down, continued pro production. And let's see that chrono swap. Come on, patience. Come on. He did start this adept slightly later because he didn't have the money. Yeah, so he actually lined it up perfectly. So I wasn't quite halfway because he didn't start them at the same time, but it's all right. Cast a curse is real as always. Patience, you're gonna look to deny this third base. And it looks like only now does Cyril realize those adepts coming across the map. He's desperately trying to get out more Zerglings. His drone's evacuating the natural immediately. He's trying to get this drone to his third. He wants to put that down so it can't be denied. The first adepts are coming in. And look at this great defense from Cyril so far, wow. Really respecting how surprised he was by this and how unprepared. Now he's sending drones back down to this natural. Oh, he's going to lose one of them. Just sent them down slightly too early. But he's got his third hatch down. He only lost one drone. Sends his queen back into the main base to inject. This is beautiful play from Cyril. Great defense so far. Um, that doesn't necessarily put Patience, you know, way behind or anything. But, uh, you know, with this opening from Patience... You're always doing this with the idea that there's a chance you will kill four or five drones, that you will get way ahead. And uh, every time that doesn't happen, you are a little bit annoyed. Because um, even though it's a small chance, you're, you're hoping that would happen sometimes. Five adepts are already out. Looks like he's going to do a really fast follow-up adept pressure here. Only shows three of them at first. Ah, interesting. And Glaives, once again, so same transition as last game. Inside spawn cactus like this, you can get to their base so quickly. This can work out really well. But Cyril, he has seen the Twilight Council. He sees it chrono boosting. He knows what he's up against. Patience here. Gonna go for this. No wall off on the natural. This is what I really do hate. Player's not walling off this natural, man. Finally, Patience does it. Gets a third gateway. But it was a little bit dicey for a moment there. Once again, fast Rotoran going down here for Cyril. And you'll notice he starts this right on about 3 minutes 40. So it gets done, yeah, about 4 minutes 15. Um, yeah, so right on 3 minutes 40 is when he drops that Rotoran. Against this 2-gate into Glaive Adept opening. He scouted the third base. His Zerglings haven't really made anything happen. And he's going to immediately start pumping out these Roaches. More Overlords. And once again, 5 or 6 drones on the third. 16 drones on the natural. And 16 drones on the main with the gas mining. He now drops an Evo Chamber, a gas, and a lair behind this. You can tell there's a, a real formula to how Serral builds up here. Definitely very tight um, execution there. 
The mothership core down here overcharges the pylon, takes out a single Zergling, I think it was. Maybe not quite worth that overcharge energy. Uh, mothership core is very low, but here we go. This time around, Patience is not pulling any punches. This is not some half-assed five adept pressure. This is nine adepts, and they're going to get over there as quickly as possible. Serral waiting with the roaches on the edge of creep. He's going to try and get some hits off on these uh, adepts. He wants to force that shade out early, but he doesn't want to go too far off creep himself because he needs to follow these shades and make sure they don't get a window to transfer in. Serral's going to chase those and then immediately go back to the front. So if those adepts come back in, they can't shade from really close or anything like that. But... Interestingly, Patience actually being very pedantic with this push. He's just like, nah, man, I'm afraid I'm going to pull back. And you know what? He is up in work as 46 probes to 41 drones. This is a very aggressive map. So if you do lose your adepts, you could die to a counter push quite easily. And we do see a different transition this game, a faster robo and forge. Oh, no, it isn't a different transition. Sorry, this is the exact same transition as last game. And warping in sentries... So he could even go for that exact same push as last game, and I wouldn't hold it against him, because with these choke points, if you get into this central area between the Zerg bases, it is so hard to break off. Serral, though, he scouts for that Overseer, sees the two gateways going down. If he sees any more gateways, he's going to get very suspicious of an attack incoming. He's got Zerglings catching two Adepts out of the map. Very nice cleanup. Roaches, Ravages... Uh, a spine crawler going down. Serral uh, here. He knows the weakness of this map. He knows he could die to a big surprise attack. And, oh man, patience here being really sloppy. I mean, four adepts with glaives should be able to beat this, but he's going to lose a lot of the adepts. He might not even be able to beat this. Oh man, this is terrible. Loses two adepts there. Um, I feel like patience here throwing away a few units a little bit too much. Only at 58 probes, not taking the gas on the third. Serral sees this. He's like, look at this. The lights aren't flashing on this nexus. You're not building probes right now. You don't have the gases. He says, I know you're going to be attacking me right now. There's even only two guys on one of this gas here. And he's going to look for these extra gateways in the main base. There's heaps of gateways going down. Looks like he will get shot down. Oh, the Zergling's even coming in to pick off probes as well. Holy crap. Serral here doing such a good job. And even though he doesn't see those gateways, look at his production tab. Oh, he's actually building drones right now. Does he not realize what he's up against? Surely he must. He sees the move out there. He's building more drones. Serral, you madman. I mean, you've got a lot of roaches and ravages and a spine, so you're probably going to be able to defend, but holy shit, I think he misread the play here pretty badly. Um, because, I mean, look at this. It's 56 probes versus 65 drones. Uh, redundant tech for the Protoss player as well. Serral getting a bit ahead of himself with how he defended, uh, chose to defend here. Those Adepts looking very dangerous. Nice force fields trap one of the uh, Ravagers. That Spine Crawler really providing an anchor right now, though. There's no Immortal, there's no Stalkers. These units cannot deal with Spine Crawlers and Roaches. A huge Zergling counterattack is going to go in as well as that single Immortal comes across the map. Serral forces out both overcharges, sees a huge Adept warp in, and those Zerglings will just stay over on this side of the map to threaten. Just force Patience to keep some of his units at home. Meanwhile, plus two melee and more and more Roaches are on the way for Serral. He's looking very comfortable right now. We've seen Patience down in this position before, and he has found ways to come back. But I've got to say, it doesn't look good. These Adepts definitely lose value over time. When plus two and Bane speed kick in, when the fights get up to like 160, 170 supply, the Adepts are worth almost nothing in those engagements um, because they just don't deal damage fast enough. They don't have enough hit points, and they're way too vulnerable to Banelings. Zerglings come in, deny that probe, heading to take a fourth base with Patience. Patience going for plus two. Oh, contaminate on the robo. Serral is all over it this game. Another sentry, another two sentries warp in. This is so all in from, from um, Patience. But Serral will need a lot of Ravages. Like, he actually needs more Ravages against this. Just five is not enough. Oh, he's going to go out and engage in the middle of the map, though. Already looking pretty decent for Serral. Nice force fields for Patience. Do come down a few Banelings. Headbutt into those Adepts and get some nice connects. The Roaches and Banelings and Ravages are starting to get choked up. But I feel like this is still a decent trade for Serral. Sentry energy is getting very low. If I was Serral, I would just make like six more Ravages or something. <laughs> um, just to make sure those force fields can't do anything. Fourth base is now mining. Serral's going to clean up here the defense with a few Zerglings. He's in a great position. Patience though, he's got a fourth. He's getting on that, that Immortal count up just a little bit. He's up to three Immortals. Warp Prism now going across the map. This is what he's been missing all game, is the chance to actually put counter pressure on the Zerg player. 
And he's actually going to use that War Prism just to scout Serral's army for now while he pushes up this left-hand side. Also, what's missing from that Belshir game was uh, multiple Observers to clear up the creep. He's got no way to clear up this creep unless he pulls back this Observer from over here. War Prism does get chased back. We've got an obscene number of sentries right now. Oh my god, this is 17 sentries, guys. Oh my god. What the hell are we looking at right now? Blink. Blink has started. He's got plus two on the way. Um, Adept's still trying to find openings, but Serral is so on top of this, man. Oh, man, he's just destroying it. Um, there's Adept's down here trying to defend these Zergings, but these are plus two Zergings now. They're going to tear apart Glaive Adept's in small numbers. Uh, Glaive Adept's, oh, not going to get the job done. There's a lot of force fields here. Oh, a little bit late on a few of those force fields. He has to throw down a second wave. Patience not clean at all. Wastes way too much energy on the first wave of force fields. And the Banelings starting to crack their way through here. Missed opportunity to take down the Watt Prism from Serral, though. At the same time, though, he has cleared out the third base. Massacred the probes there. He's massacring the Adepts. And Patience has to call GG. Wow. Wow. Great solid play from Serral. I love that he pulls his drones away from his nat natural. I would have, uh, from the two-gate pressure earlier, I would have never thought to do that. Um, I would be like, no, I'll just build Zerglings and run drones. I'll be fine. Um, like, run drones as the Adepts come in. But such safe play from Serral. Um, he made it so his queens cover the front against two gate, and then he just his zerglings sit in the main. So if the adept shade pass, they got to fight the zerglings, and it worked out perfectly. Um, from the opening, he just controlled the pace of the game. Perfect defense with his roachling from the adepts, and uh, all in all, some fantastic play. Patience just playing his normal. I want to kill you as quickly as possible style. As he always does, constantly trying to attack as fast and hard as possible. But Serral did win that series 2-1. Two, two, so guys, thank you very much for hanging out. I appreciate the support. I'll be back tomorrow with another daily. Don't forget, guys, send in your replays for the Icy Far Challenge. Uh, this week it is... Um, a gentleman never attacks without warning. So you've got to send a unit in front of your army and dance dance out front before you make an attack so every time you attack you've got to send up a unit to to dance in their vision as warning um you don't need to necessarily tell them that's a warning they should figure it out through the process of the game though all right thank you very much for hanging out guys don't forget to hug a watermelon kick a walrus and of course punch a cactus to the moon i'll see you guys next time goodbye and good night